Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And with the next property, that is what? Stability. So, the next property that we deal with is stability of the system. Fine. Now, based on stability, we could either have a stable system or we have an unstable system. Now, what is a stable system? What is an unstable system? So, a stable is that system for which if we provide a bounded input, we have a bounded output. I will explain, okay? It's called the Bebo criteria. Bebo criteria. Which means what? That for a bounded input, we have or implies a bounded output. Whereas for an unstable system, we have an unbounded input, unbounded input for a bounded output. Fine. Now bounded, this bounded word refers to restriction, right? Refers to restriction, which means that there is a restriction on the amplitude of the input or the output. Bounded means what? That the amplitude is finite. The amplitude of the signal is finite. So if you provide a si signal which, whose amplitude is finite to a system and it gives you another signal at the output whose amplitude is again finite, so this means that this system is a stable system. Whereas if you give a finite amplitude signal to a, a system whose output is infinite signal, so that is an unstable system. Fine, the amplitude is finite. So, so, so examples for such signal that the amplitude is finite could be a DC signal, right? A unit step signal, this is also an example of this DC. Uh, you could have the sine function, the cos function, etc. These are the signals whose amplitude is finite. Fine. So you would consider signal. Now, if only for a single signal the system is infinite, so it means that this system is generalized as an unstable system. Fine. So the book has started off with y of t is t times x of t. So now t is our coefficient, but x of t is our input. So if we say our x of t is, let's say, equal to 1. Or, or you can say x of t is equal to, let's say, the unit step function, so that the negative portion also cuts out. So y of t is equal to t times u of t. So which would be t for time greater than or equal to 0, right? And it would be 0 for time less than 0. So which means that this is a function which is constantly increasing in magnitude. So this is an unbounded signal. So which means that this is an unstable system. This is an unstable system. Or if I use the green color for unstable, so that would be fine because I've used the red over there. Unstable. Fine. Similarly, now we have another function if y of t is exponential of x of t. So now what do we do? So we have to take again x of t as some value. So if you if you do it generally, we cannot find any signal for which this system is unstable. So what you do is, if we're talking generally, so we put x of t's magnitude such that it is less than a finite value, b. This b is some finite value, right? So which means that I could write it in this particular way as well, negative uh, x of t 
b and a positive x of t so this b is some finite value in between negative x of t and positive x of t right so if this is the case and this system satisfies this equation so this means that y of t is somewhere in between exponential of b and negative exponential of b and b is some finite value so exponential of some finite value would be again a finite value so this means that this is a stable system fine now i have more examples written over here for myself x of t plus 2 Now, where did this x of t plus two come from? Okay. Okay. Y of t is x of t and then plus two. So have a look. You need to understand the phenomena. What the system is doing. So the system is taking the input x of t and it's adding two to it. So if you provide any boundary input, it would add two to it. So adding two to something finite is again something finite. so this system is a stable system stable why because this adds to to your finite input is that okay so so let's say the finite input is again u of t so this would be plus 2 so u of t is 1 so this would be 1 plus 2 is 3 for t greater than 0 right sine of x of t y of t is sine of x of t so what does this system do it takes the sign of your provided input so if x of t is any finite value x of t is let's say any general value a let's say x of t is equal to a so this is a finite value right so sin of a would be our our uh, y of t system right so we know that the sin is a stable system because the range of sin is what range of sin is negative 1 to positive 1 so whatever you give it at the input whether this x of t is stable or unstable this sign will provide you a value which is in between minus 1 and 1 so this is some finite value in a finite range so this sign is a stable system whether you give it a uh, a finite value or an infinite value similarly let's say we have a function y of t is what it's x of t upon 2 x of t upon 2 so it's take it takes the current input and it divides it by 2 so no it's x of t by t sorry 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 x of t divided by t so now what happens is let's say our current input x of t is some finite value and i take the finite value to be 2 so what would be y of t y of t would be 2 upon t now we don't know about the value of t right so as t increases if t is a very small duration t is very very small so this means what that y of t would be very very large so this means that this would be unbounded so for a bounded input we have an unbounded output right so which means that this system is an un stable system right now if you have about integration y of t is negative infinity to t x of tau d tau so what do i do is that i take a cup about the input say x of tau is equal to cos of tau so my question is y of t is negative infinity to t cos of tau d tau so the integration of cos is sin right 
So we have sine of tau and the limits are t and negative infinity. So which means that y of t in this particular case is sine of t and minus sine of minus infinity so it would be plus sine of infinity. Now sine of infinity would again be some value ranging from negative 1 to positive 1. So what do we have is that this, this is now the amplitude shifting. This is a one wave form. This is a constant value, so which means that now this is the amplitude shifting. So if this black value now represents sine of alpha, sine of infinity, so this uh, green represents the sine of t, so which means that this is some finite value, so this is a stable system, right? This is a stable system but what what if I take my input to be unit step signal if my x of tau is u of tau so what in that case now you know what would happen y of t is integration negative infinity to t u of tau d tau the integration of u of tau is what it's the ram signal so you get R of t, this is what? This is the RAM signal, this is an unbounded signal. You know what a RAM signal is? It would increase with the value of time. So which means that this system is an unstable system. I told you if you have any single function as well for which the system is unstable, the system is generally unstable. Fine? Is that fine? Right. Similarly, now if we have for derivative, so let's say I write over here y of t is equal to the derivative of the function, the input, right? So say again I have some constant input. Say x of t is a constant. So we know the derivative of a constant would be 0. So this implies that y of t would be the derivative of this constant which would be equal to zero so for a so for a bounded input we have a bounded output which means that the system is stable in this particular example right but but if we take the input to be step signal again but again now I'm coming over here if again x of t is your unit step signal so what happens is that your y of t is the differentiation of unit step signal and you know that the unit differentiation of unit step signal is unit impulse signal which is an unbounded signal it has a magnitude of infinite at the point at which it's occurring so which means that for a bounded input we have an unbounded output so this system the derivative system that over here we discussed is an un stable system fine so that's all about that I have right let's see if I have any other point I don't have so the relationship between this unit impulse and a unit step I have already solved you can watch that video it's already present in the playlist if you're at this point most probably you have watched that also so the book has some more examples, you can see it yourself. Well, you don't, mathematical, no. It has theory written. So I don't like reading the theory. For me, that's all about today. That's all about stability as well. Uh, so we only remain with two properties, the most important, time invariance and linearity. So see you very soon, inshallah, with the next property. Till then, take care of yourselves and not only yourselves, everyone around you also okay and do remember me in your prayers goodbye